Hey, I'm Dragon, and it's time for another Geometry Node Base Tunnel with Blender 3.1. So, let's get started. First, add a curve path, and then change the timeline to the Geometry Nodes Editor, and we can click New. Now let's add a curve to Mesh Node, and plug the curve circle into the Profile Curve. This will get our basic tunnel. Though, we don't want it shaded smooth, so we can get a Set Shade Smooth node, and uncheck Shade Smooth. Now we can use the Extrude node, that was just added in 3.1, and change extrude faces to vertices. We also want to make the extrusion go inward, so type a negative value. I personally use negative 0.3. For some reason you actually have to type the value to go into the negatives with the extrude node. Not really sure why that is, but it's there. Now let's add mesh to curve, and then straight back to curve to mesh, and this time add a star shape pro to the profile curve. With it, make the inner and outer radius very small. I use the values of 0.04 and 0.02, and then change the points to 6, and be sure to check fill caps. Then we can duplicate the first curve to mesh along with the curve circle and add a join geometry node, and then plug these newly duplicated nodes into join mesh and plug geometry into curve. Then you can change the radius to just barely fit within the star wireframe. Now you can duplicate the curve to mesh node again, or you can just reuse it. I personally duplicated it for more control if I wanted to in the future. Then this plugs into the join geometry, and add mesh to points, instance on points, and set shade smooth nodes in between all this. For the instances on points, you can add a cube and scale it down. Then on mesh to points, change it from vertices to faces. And then a subdivision surface for more rounded look. Now coming out from the extrude node, we can add another instances on points node, followed by an icosphere going into instances. Then for some random scale, we can add a random value, but change the min and max to very small unless you want huge variations in scale. Now the rotation, we can have a value of 0 and 1, so it's completely random scale. Now let's take another join geometry that's connected to the original join geometry. This is only so that it looks a little less chaotic to look at when this node setup is finished, along with making it easier to assign materials. Now we will take and duplicate curve to mesh again, and change the radius of the curve circle to something like 0.02, and add a translate node and change the translation, and move it off to the side. I personally use values of 0.96 and 0.18. Then, because unfortunately there's no mirror node yet, you need to duplicate this four times, and change the values to negatives, and mixed with positives, so that there's four rods, and if that was a confusing, here's a screenshot of what I mean. Now to materials. Since we want each one of these node setups to have different materials, we will need five different set material nodes, and assign different materials to each. To make this easy to see, I go and add five materials, and just call them tunnel, and then a number, so like tunnel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I also choose a temporary color to see which is which. For the four beams, I add an emission node, then for the main body part of the tunnel, I add a glossy node, and, and choose a copper type color. Then for the icospheres, I do the same thing, but choose a lighter copper color. For the rods, I add another glossy shader, and just make it slightly darker. For the subdivided cube, I do something a little different and add a mix shader with a transparent and emission shader connected to it. I then make both transparent and emission shaders orange, with transparent shader being a darker orange. To control what part is what, I add a color ramp, plugged into the factor, and then a Veroni texture into the color ramp. I then make the randomness a little less and scale to around 2.5. I then come back to the main copper tube, and add a displacement that's connected to a noise and a Veroni texture to create a spiral. It's worth mentioning that this texture will be stretched if you decide to move and play around with the tunnel, so what you see at the moment won't be the same as the result, unless you ha leave the tunnel the same. Well, now we can start animating the camera, which is actually very easy since this tunnel has a curve. All you need to do is select the camera, and add follow path constraint, and select the tunnel, and then hit animate path, and you're all good, aside from the fact that it may be too fast. To change the speed, select the tunnel, and under curve properties, change the amount of frames, which is under path animation. Oh, and if your animation is going the wrong direction, you can go into edit mode on the tunnel, and right click, and hit switch direction, and it should fix that issue. The other benefit of this being a curve is that you can change the shape of the tunnel by going into edit mode and extruding and moving the curve. Once you have the tunnel as you like it, we're done. Other than a small tweak to the camera, 
like the rotation, which you will have to actually use the side panel to actually get it to rotate. For some reason, with it being a constraint, that's how it has to happen. Well, there we have it. Hopefully you got something out of this tutorial and enjoyed making it. And also, here's a few renders to finish things off. But otherwise, bye! <laughs>